Hi, my name is Willy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to install Pop! OS 2204 with ButterFS as the underlying file system. So I will use optimized sub-volume layout so that you can make use of software like TimeShift to create automatic snapshots of your system. And I will also show you if something goes wrong, how you very quickly recreate your system using time shift and those automatic snapshots. I do have a guide on this as well with much more explanations and much more details on the exact steps and the actual commands that you can simply use if you plan to do a similar install. But now let's dive in. So I've booted my computer. Actually, I would highly recommend that you install this on your machine first in a virtual machine. Okay, so there's a very good project, Quick MU, uh, which you can launch very quickly and try out the steps so you are familiar with the commands and you know what you're doing before actually doing this on bare metal. I am doing this on bare metal. I have a machine here where I have a dual boot system with several other Linux um, distributions and also Windows. So I do have to, to be very careful which disk I'm using. Now, let me first uh, boot up the system, make sure secure boot is deactivated. Um, and then I have, I have Bentoy on the USB flash drive, which is a very useful utility so that you can simply copy ESO files to the USB flash disk and then you have all those different distributions where, which you can then install or run the live system. And for me, I don't have an NVIDIA system here right now, but I'm simply using the Intel one. Okay, so here we are. So first select the language, select the region, and I have a German keyboard. Now, before we start with the actual install, the first step is always the partitioning layout of your system. And uh, in previous install installation guides, I did this manually on the terminal using the parted command line utility. Of course, you can use gparted for this, um, but I noticed that I more or less simply replicate the partition layout that PopOS does by default. Okay, so when I'm reinstalling PopOS, um, I either already have the recommended partition layout or I'm actually doing the installation twice. Okay, so I'm simply clicking clean install first. Now, very importantly, you have to select the correct disk. For me, this is the disk um, with uh, an SSD. Um, this one I'm using for different Linux distributions. Here I have Windows installed and this is the USB flash drive. Okay, so I want to get the recommended partition layout. So I simply say, okay, let's erase everything and fine. This is not really important because I am redoing the installation in a second with ButterFS again. So I want to encrypt the drives with LUX. So I'm encrypting this. And now I'm doing the very standard PopOS default install, which creates all the partitions that I need. And we will go through the partitions in a second. Um, and I can simply reuse this partition layout. Okay, I will overwrite the install with another install using ButterFS in a couple of minutes. But now this is the, for me, the quickest way to get the correct partition layout. Of course, you can go through gparted and do resize the partitions to your liking. Um, again, I tend to find myself always in a position to simply stick to the default layout. So why bother? Okay, let's come back when this finishes. All right, now it took less than five minutes to do the first install. Again, this is just to getting the partition layout correct. So now very importantly, do not hit restart device or shut down, but just go in the dock and quit the installer. Now I will go through the partition layout that the installer created. There are chapter marks in the videos in the description. So please skip this step if you already know what you're doing and you want to actually do the ButterFS install. Okay, so let's, um, 
open gpart at first to understand the partition layout in the installation structure. Okay, so again, I have different disks here. The one I'm using to install PopOS was SDA. And we see that there is one partition, um, about uh, 498 m megabit, uh, which is the boot partition, uh, the partition, the EFI partition. Okay, so this is where the system D boot loader will reside. And you see this with the flags here, boot and ESP is um, for the EFI partition, indicates the EFI partition. Then PopOS creates by default a recovery partition, which is basically just a copy of your USB thumb drive on your hard disk. And this is very useful. I will show at the end of the video how I use it whenever something goes wrong with my system. I simply run the recovery system, open up time shift, and I'm back in my old system. Then we have SDA3, which is the largest partition, which actually contains our system. Okay, so and this is encrypted with LUX. And the last one is a swap partition, which is al actually also an encrypted swap partition because whenever PopOS mounts this partition, it uses the crypt tab to do that. So every time you reboot, the partition gets new keys. And uh, so everything that is written to this partition is always re-encrypted with new keys. So this is an encrypted swap partition. Okay, so this is the overall layout. Now let's have a quick look into the LUX encrypted partition. And for this, um, we probably could also do this with Gparted, but I like to do this on the terminal to just show you what's, what is going on. So first of all, let's see, um, let's do a LUX dump on my SDA3 to see what the installer actually did. And for me, very importantly, it is using uh, LUX as a way to encrypt your partition. Unfortunately, in Linux, we're still not able to install a system and after the installation process, then do the full disk encryption. We have to do this prior to installing the system, which is contrary to what Windows or Mac OS provide you as feature. Well, um, so version two is the most recent one and uh, it is using AS XDS Plane 64. So basically these are all the default option that you get when you do a crypt format of a disk with the default options. So nothing fancy here. Now let's open, open, let's open it up. So crypt setup lux open dev sda3 and let's mount this to a device called crypt data. Enter your lux passphrase. Let's see whether this worked. Yeah, there is the crypt data, but there's also something called data root. And this is very interesting because by default, when you hit encryption in the installer for with PopOS, it actually uses LVM techniques, so logical volume management, which is a very fancy way to combine different disks to one partition. Okay, so this is a very flexible and dynamic way to do that. Honestly, I've never used the features of LVM on my systems, but PopOS recommends that. And I've never seen any downside to using LVM um, compared to not using it. So there's no performance issues or, or any issues I ever had with this setup. So I stick, try to stick up as close as upstream to the PopOS installer as I can. So I'm also reusing this LVM. Let's have actually a look at this LVM. So the LVM has a um, uh, first a f uh, for, um, physical volume and you can access or li get a list of physical volumes with the PVS command and you see that the encrypted partition is a physical volume. And then we have something that is also called a volume group and this volume group, there is a command for this as well, sudo volume, is called data. Okay, and in this data, I have also one logical volume and there is then the last command and this logical volume is called root. Okay, and in root, this is where actually all my files reside. Okay, so there's, this is like um, the basic structure of the LVM, um, of the logical volume management system. 
Okay, so this is what the installer does. So let me close everything. Um, let's first close the um, data root and then also the crypt data. Okay, let's check whether I have anything in my devices. No. Okay. All right, let's close this. And now we are going to do the second install, the real install with ButterFS as the underlying file system. Okay, so hit the install PopOS button here again, uh, select your language, select the region that you want to use, uh, your keyboard layout. And then we are going to do a custom install. Okay, so we're going to do custom and now you can see all my disks, okay? Again, this one is the one I'm using for PopOS. This one I basically use for other distributions. Here is where Windows is at. Okay, very importantly, check that there are no black check marks on any other partition. And now let's go, ahead, go and tell the installer what it should do, okay? So on the first partition, I'm going to use this partition. I'm going to use it as my boot FE partition and Let's format this partition again. And there is the black check mark. Very good. The second one I'm going to use as custom. And if you include the mount point slash recovery or the custom field slash recovery, then the PopOS installer is basically copying your USB flash drive, the ESO on this USB flash drive to um, this partition. And you can then uh, always access it, access it at boot time. And very importantly, you have to select FAT32. Let me format this and recovery. All right. Now the last partition, I'm going to use this for swap use, okay? And the middle one, this is, Popo has already encrypted this for me, okay? So I didn't need to go into the terminal and do all those fancy commands. It, it already did this and I know the passphrase of this. Um, you can choose whatever you want to, this device name to be called. I simply stick to the default. And now, where is it? Well, it's actually at the bottom, okay? So at the bottom you see LVM data. And I'm using this then as the partition. Let's format this for root. So everything will go to this partition. And finally, I'm using ButterFS as the file system. So there's a black check mark here, no black check marks there. There's one, there's one, there's one. All right. Always double check. This looks correct. This looks correct. This looks correct. And down below, also correct. All right, hit erase and install. Enter your name. Pick a picture. Choose your password. And that's it. Let's wait until this finishes. Okay, we're back. That was quick again. And now, do not hit restart device or shutdown yet. There's basically one major problem with PopOS way to install a ButterFS system and a minor one. So the major one is that PopOS does not create subvolumes by default. Okay, so for instance, Fedora creates root and home subvolumes and then the corresponding um, slash and slash home are mounted into the subvolumes. Timeshift requires add and add home subvolumes. Okay, so you then slash is mounted into the add subvolume and slash home is mounted into the add home subvolume. And I really like Timeshift because it is a graphical user interface program and it is so neat to create snapshots and I, I will show you how to automate this process. So as a first step, I do need to create those subvolumes at and at home. And the minor issue with the way PopOS installs a ButterFS system, it, it st strictly uses the default mount options. And there is some debate which mount options are optimal and the defaults do get better over time. I do tend to stick away to the um, p uh, way Fedora mounts ButterFS partitions. And um, so I will uh, slightly adjust the mount options. But this is rather optional and um, a, a preference that you might want to skip as well. Okay, so 
let's do the post installation steps. Okay, so let's open up a terminal and let's become uh, root so we don't have to use sudo uh, so much. Now first let's open the lux partition and pick the name that you also chose in the PopOS installer. And now I'm going to mount the data um, root, the logical volume, right? Have a look again. This guy over here, I'm going to mount this into slash MNT so I can access the files there. So let's mount, but here let's use some option. So first of all, I want to make sure that I'm mounting the top level ButterFS uh, root um, of the partition, okay? And this has always the ID of five. So I make sure that I'm mounting this right now. Then I actually using the defaults, I do like them um, because it automatically detects SSDs. Uh, it has a good um, default value for the space catch, etc., etc. So the defaults do get better. What I do like on my system is to use compression. So I can save a bit of space on my small SSD and uh, there are different up to, I, don't, I think, 16 values of compression. And uh, I'm using just level one because this is also something that Fedora uses. Um, the default is level, level three. So there is like a trade-off between memory and processor usages for encrypting and decrypting files, um, but it is really minor. So I, I've used three as well and it worked just fine. And also um, with an option which will become the default very soon because I'm on an SSD. There is asynchron a discard of the SSD, which uh, is already in newer kernels and um, starting with 516, I think. So this will soon become the default, but it is not yet. So I'm also using this mount option already here. And we will add those mount option to the FS tab as well. So this will all, so that the system will always use these, what I call optimized mount option. And there is a bit of a debate whether one should use no A time versus rel time and so which space catch version, etc., etc. For me personally, those are the two that I include and my system works just fine. Now, what is the device that I want to mount? That was data slash root and I'm going to mount this into slash MNT. So let's have a look into slash MNT. This is a normal system, okay? So you have your home folder, for instance, MNT home. This is where my user data is resi resides. So this is like every other distribution. But very importantly, there are no subvolumes yet. Okay, so if I do a Butterfest subvolumes, uh, sorry, subvolume list sl um, slash MNT, there are no subvolumes. Okay, so this is the major issue um, with the way PopOS uses ButterFS. Um, so let's create subvolumes. Okay, so let's create subvolume, create, and TimeShift uses this. It's hard coded into TimeShift at and at home. So let's also you use this. Okay, um, create. Of course, I have to be on a ButterFS partition to do that, and this partition is mounted to slash mnt. Okay. And now I'm going to move all the files that I have to into this subvolume. Okay, so a subvolume can be used just like a folder, but it is not a folder. It is on a file system levels. Um, really, the file system, the kernel drivers for the file system do um, care in with. with where data is located at. And the beauty about subvolumes is that data that is shared between subvolumes is only once on the drive. Okay, so this is what we call copy on the right. So only if we, I change something, then there are changes in the subvolumes. And this will enable us later on to create instant snapshots of a system. And when something breaks down, I can simply go back to this instance uh, snapshot and this takes less than a second to do so. So let's move everything into this add subvolume. Of course, I cannot move. Uh, you can simply ignore this warning here. 
Okay, let's first have a look into MNT. Now there is only a subvolume, and if I have a look at the list of those subvolume, it will actually detect that there there is this add subvolume. Okay, now I want to create yet another subvolume. Let me remove this warning here, and this will be called add home. Okay, so this is now created, and I'm going to move everything from my home folder outside of this add subvolume into this add home subvolume. Okay, so this is going into add home. No user data yet, so this is instant. Let's have a look what is now in add and home. Nothing. Very good. What about at home? There should be my user folder. All right. And one more time, let's have a look at the subvolume list. I have two subvolumes now at and at home. Okay. Now I need to tell my system um, to mount slash to add and slash home to at home. Okay. So I need to change the FS tab. For this, okay. So let's go into add, etc. FS tab. So this is basically the UUID of um, Dev Mapper data minus root, and this is mounted into to slash. It uses Butterfest as the underlying file system, and then it uses the default value. Now I want to change this to tell the mount actually a subvolume here, the subvolume add, and I also want it to use compression VSTD, sorry, VSTD1, and the discard equals async option. Now let me copy, copy this, so copy, and let's paste. At home is on the same partition. So at home, and this is supposed to be mounted to slash home. Everything else uh, stays the same. Now, and this is the beauty actually about subvolume. Your partition has a certain size, 60 gigabytes. And if you use, for instance, uh, ext4, you would create two partition, 10 gigabytes for slash and the rest for slash home. With subvolumes, you can put everything onto just one partition. So you never have the problem that slash runs out of space or slash home runs out of space and you need to dynamically resize those partitions. No, everything is just in one partition and using those sub those uh, means of subvolumes, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, the whole partition is always used for everything. Okay, so this is, I guess, one beauty of subvolumes of the Butterfest file system or other file system similar to it. Okay, control O, enter control X. So this is now saved. And we also need to look into the crypt tab. Here we see that this partition, this is the swap partition, is used, um, is encrypted on boot time. And this is the actual partition that I encrypted, that is encrypted with Lux. And since I'm using the discard equals async or mount option, I also pa need to pass um, discard to the crypt tab. Otherwise, the discard of the partitions won't work. Okay, so let's do this. Now, the last step is I need to tell the uh, systemd bootloader when it loads the kernel to go into my add subvolume. Okay, and so for this, I need to adjust the configuration of the so-called kernel step. So let me go again, mount, etc. kernel step. There's a file called configuration. And there is a default section, which I leave untouched, and a user section. And here I need to add a um, option to a kernel option here, okay? So very importantly, the last line here has no comma, all lines before do have a comma. So let me put a comma here and then add root flags equals 
sub wall equals add no comma. Very importantly, otherwise you get very weird errors when you update the init driver class. Control O, Control X. There you go. Now the, uh, the same option needs to go to the systemd bootloader, and this uh, so we now need to mount the EFI partition. And let's mount this into boot EFI. And now let's change at boot EFI loader entries pop OS current. Okay, so here you see there are some options that you can change. And after the splash, I'm also including now root flags equals sub vol equals add. Control O, Control X. Now, optionally, what I like to do, because I want to always be able to access the recovery system, I do add a timeout to the systemd bootloader. So you can do that in to MNT at boot fe loader loader.conf. So default is the pop OS current entry, and I do like to add a timeout of say three seconds. Okay, now let's go to slash and let's go into our system because we need to update the init ramfs and we will use a cheroot environment for this okay so first of all let's unmount everything and let's remount the add sub volume okay so let's also use defaults compress equals csd1 and discard equals a sync and now def mapper data root and let's map this okay very importantly previously we did sub wall id equals five that was the top level so i can have a look in all the sub volumes now i'm going into the sub volume i'm mounting the actual sub volume to a folder okay so if i have a look now the same story happens here and now i need to map uh, to mount the devices to the corresponding folders and there is um if you have a look into on the system D website, how to repair the bootloader. It provides you the commands and folders and devices that you need to uh, mount bind. Um, so this is for I in those dev, dev PTS, proc, sys, and run. Let's do a mount bind dollar I mount dollar I done. Okay, and now finally I can cheroot into MNT and now I'm not in the install in the ESO in the live system anymore but I'm actually in my real system so first of all let's mount everything check whether the FS tab works and it tells you yeah successfully mounted successfully mounted successfully mounted some um, were already mounted and the one command that you need to run from a root environment is to update the init ramfs to pass those root flags on to the uh, kernel options okay so minus c minus k minus all you can also use minus u for updating minus c will actually clear everything and then recreate everything and k is the kernel version but i want to do this for all all right now if you run into some weird python file return errors stuff like that then you probably forget added a comma or forgot a comma after the splash in the kernel stop configuration file. Okay, so uh, be aware of that. Now that's it. Okay, so let me exit, exit, exit. And I can finally, fingers crossed, restart the device. So let me see my FE boot options. Oh, there it is, pop OS on pa my Patriot Pyro. Okay. Let's see, see that I have an added a timeout with three seconds so I can quickly actually go into the recovery system if I want to, but I want to go into the real system. So I need to enter my crypt data. I do like to hit at first boot the escape key. So I have a verbose output of what is happening here. Okay, so now I need to enter, unlock my partition. 
I usually don't do this when I work with a system, but like after the first install, I do n need to check that everything is okay. And that's it, right? Here we are. We are welcomed with the welcome screen. So choose your preferences here, um, whatever you want to be your top bar. Sure. I do like the light mode more. Uh, I want to have location services. My time zone is in Germany. I'm skipping this. All right, all is done, all is well. So let's double check whether everything is as we want it to be. So first of all, let's see what is mounted. Boot FE, recovery, none, slash and slash home. Very good. But let's have a closer look how it is mounted. So let's grab everything from Dev Mapper. You can see that the butterfest, butterfest, and those are the mount options actually used. And those are the default values, and this is exactly how I like my systems. Okay, very good. Now let's check whether I'm using swap. Yeah, there it is, a four gigabyte swap, swap partition. And finally, let's have a look at the butterfest file system show this is the device I'm using and the sub volumes list at and at home. Very good. So since I am on an SSD, I am using already the discard option in the FS tab. Nevertheless, I do like to enable also the FS trim timer. Okay, so there is no harm in having both the FS trim command um, cleaning the free space of your SSD, but also the, using the discard option. So this is, uh, there's no harm to do to have both. And lastly, you need to check whether um, in your lvm.conf, if you are, if you have um, a SSD, whether this value is set to one. By default it is, okay? So it, this should be fine, but maybe for some reason, something is off with your install. All right, so the next step before we, before I show you how I use TimeShift is to, of course, um, update the system, upgrade the system, and do a final reboot. Okay, so let's do sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade. Sure. Okay, let's do a full upgrade. This usually shouldn't do nothing okay some packages can be removed so let's purge those packages and also run the auto clean command flat pack is activated by default okay so let's do now a reboot and then i will show you how i use time shift okay now let us install time shift first so either use the software center or I like to use the terminal. And then run time shift. And we want to use ButterFS snapshots. Select your disk. And I like to keep the default values. I like to do monthly automatic snapshots, weekly and daily and on boot. Okay, stop Chrome emails for scheduled tasks. That's awesome, a good call. And I do like to have snapshots of my user data of my home fol folder as well, because sometimes I mess up and sometimes I want to restore a file uh, a week ago, a month ago, just uh, a day ago. And so I have them ready to access when I also do snapshots of my 
home folder uh, of my at home subvolume that contains my user data. Now then this option, the Butterfly SQ groups option, there are a couple of issues that people have with this option. Personally, I've never had any issues and it is the recommended way so that you actually so that you can see how large your sub volumes in your snapshots are. Um, so uh, if you do run into some issues, mostly it is concerned if you manually also activate or deactivate or change the quotas system of ButterFS. But again, I, I, I never had any issues with this option. So let's have it here. All right. And now let's create the first snapshot. Bam. That's it. Okay. And let's now do a comment. This was more or less a clean install here. So this just took a snapshot of the current state of your system files and also of your ho home files. And you can always revert to this state. Now, everything that you do in your system is copy on write. So only if files change, only the changes are written into the, into the subvolumes. And this is all done by the file system uh, at the file system level. And you do not need to think about this. Okay. So this is very nice. Okay. Now, um, let's close this. You do see an error here. This is just for the very first time when you run time shift and quotas are not enabled then time shift will enable those quotas for you. So for instance, if I do another time, sh uh, um, another snapshot, um, okay. I can also do this on the command line, of course, then no errors anymore. Okay, so just ignore that error here. Okay, um, I do want to have automatic snapshots whenever I do a sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade, whenever I install a software, whenever I mess around with my system um, using apt, for instance. Okay, so if something goes bad, goes wrong, or I don't know, I installed a bad PPA and then I installed software and I want to revert um, to preview to a previous snapshot. And for this, I've created a little hook for apt. Um, you can find it on my GitHub page and I will show you now how to install it. This is really just running time shift before any apt operation. So first of all, you need to install a couple of tools, um, git and make, and then you do a git clone github.com and the utility is called timeshift auto snap apt dot git and I want to store this in my home user folder and let's call this timeshift auto snap apt. Okay, so let's go into this folder and since it's just a script, it is just a file that is copied to the um, to the hooks of apt, you can simply run sudo make install. And there is one configuration file that let's have a look into this one time shift auto snap apt conf. Here you can change some basic settings. Um, if you have a dedicated boot partition, not FE partition, but boot partition, which we don't have, then this utility will also make a backup of that partition into the snapshot, but we don't have that. So we can actually simply do a false here. We do have an FE partition. So the FE partition will be um, backed up into the snapshots in a folder called boot.backup slash FE. So if you mess up your FE partition for some reason, you can always restore that given um, the files in this folder here. Now, by default, I do not want to skip this, but I do want to do this. Um, delete snapshots if um, after three snapshots. Okay, so I only um, save three of those snapshots. Okay, and update grub. We are not using grub um, time shift. Um, there's actually a, a nice package grub butterfs that also creates um, boot options, so you can boot into individual snapshots directly from grub. Since PAPOS does not use grub, we can simply 
put this to false, but since we're not using grab anyways, this option is irrelevant anyways. So control A O, control X saves this and let's see whether this works. So uh, auto snap apt, you can see that your FE partition is rsynced and you created yet another snapshot. So if I open up time shift again, you can see that we now have three snapshots. Okay, so we can always go back to the state of my systems um, to these three st snapshots. Of course, time shift will also check every hour if um, it n snapshots need to be done. So if you hit selected um, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, or boot, then those snapshots will be created automatically and um, the retention policy will be used to delete older snapshots. The boot um, snapshots will not be done directly on boot, but about 10 minutes afterwards. Okay, so this is done by um, the files located in uh, etc. cron.d, um, cron.d. And here you have basically two uh, cron jobs that run hourly or in boot and then check whether the retention policy requires you to delete or to do uh, actual snapshotting, etc. Your top level root of your ButterFS partition is located um, in this folder called backup, run time shift backup. So when time shift is run for the first time, it mounts the top level root, the subvol ID five. Um, so you can also access it here. Okay, so add is your slash folder, at home is your slash home folder, and in those time shift butterfs, so cd time shift butterfs, you have your snapshots, okay? Snapshots daily, hourly, monthly, on demand, weekly, and boot. Those are symbolic links to the snapshots that are stored in this folder. Okay, and here you can see the three snapshots that I already have. So for instance, let's open this one. The most recent one, um, that was 1717. And you see that there is an at and an at home and those are the corresponding um, subvolumes that were that were taken to this time. Okay, all right. Now, this is basically it. Um, I do want to show you though how useful this setup is. Okay, so see, assume that you did something bad or something went wrong when installing a package or something, right? Or you did, let me do this, what you should never do, do remove dash rf right recursive and force your etc folder bam that was quick and now all my configurations files are lost my fs tab my crypt tab everything is lost okay i can not even do a sudo command anymore because sudo does not exist okay so i messed up really bad and if i do restart now my computer okay so of course typically we would restart the computer. Okay, and let's try to boot into Pop! OS. The FE partition still works. So the image ramfs on the FE partition is still a correct one. Let me hit escape to show you that the system doesn't know how to boot and doesn't know what, what to do because the important Etsy folder is just missing. Okay, so the system gets stuck at boot or you enter some busy box or whatever. Something is just wrong. Okay, and in such situations, very easily simply reboot your system. And go into your recovery system. So this is basically the live USB stick that we used to install, saved to our disk on the recovery partition. Okay, so select your language, select the region, um, your keyboard layout, and let's hit try demo mode. Go into files, other locations, 
search for the drive which is encrypted this one is right here okay so I enter my lux pathways here and you see that you can already access your files okay so this one is broken my home files are still fine and of course I can go ahead if it's just a file that I need I can copy it around here I can use those snapshots in a sense just like folders um, but there are um, sub volumes okay so there's a there's a difference but in a, but we work more or less the same with those okay so I can access my files here if I need to restore an individual fine file or a single file but of course we can simply you may now make use of time shift okay so let's install time shift and then open time shift okay butterfs next what is the disk there you um, the patrick pyro even though it tells you it does not have a butterfs partition this is due to the encryption just ignore this it'll work okay um, i filed a bug for this but i mean it's still working and yeah here they are there are your three different snapshots so i'm s selecting the most recent one i hit restore Hmm, let me think whether I do want to restore my home folder. No, I don't want that. Just my add sub volume, a little disclaimer. And that's it. Your system is back. That was easy, right? So let's restart and see whether my system is back again. Let's boot into the actual PopOS system. Enter the Lux pathways. And there we go. Everything is back to normal. Okay. Just so we are now at the snapshot at the point in time where we did the snapshot. Okay. So we can now redo everything or uh, think about what we did wrong. All right. Okay, that is it. That is the system that I'm using since a couple of years. Um, I hope you found this uh, useful. Um, if I did something wrong or you have recommendations what um, I can do better um, on my system or what you do on your systems, please leave a comment and I'll see you in the next guide. Bye bye.